Postal Service is in an, an extreme bind, and it needs Congress to help immediately. Chief Congressional Correspondent Mike Emanuel has a look at all the problems and some potential solutions. The Postal Service has $100 billion of debt and unfunded debt and liabilities at the end of fiscal year 2013. GAO's top actuary sounded the bailout alarm before a House Oversight and Subcommittee as the post office appears to be in a financial mess and changes may be coming to your mail delivery. Chairman Darrell Issa is calling for reform. The fact is there's no bailout possible without fundamental change. The Postal Service has exhausted its borrowing authority, faces unnecessary and artificial costs that it cannot afford, and is constrained by law from correcting the problem. Despite our efforts and our hard work, we cannot return the organization to profitability or secure a long-term financial outlook without the passage of comprehensive reform legislation. ISA says the post office talks a good game, but it's up to Congress to legislate real change, including closing some processing plants now, no longer delivering to your door, and five-day delivery. Two million dollars for getting rid of six-day delivery. Six million dollars for going to the curb per year. These kinds of changes can save the post office and for the American people provide actually a better product. Delaware Democrat Tom Carper has a plan. He would move to five-day delivery after 2017, keep all processing facilities open for at least four years, and would allow the Postal Service to recover overpayments into the federal pension system. Carper told Fox, quote, it also directly addresses the source of the Postal Service's two biggest financial liabilities, retiring pension costs and health care costs, so taxpayers won't be left on the hook for these obligations in the future. ISA says the Senate plan doesn't address some big problems at the post office for three years. So he's calling on the president to push for fixing it sooner. Brett? Our thanks. The government announced a $1.2 billion settlement with Toyota that Attorney General Eric Holder says is the largest financial penalty of its kind ever imposed on an auto company. It also filed a criminal charge saying the automaker defrauded customers, consumers, by issuing misleading statements about safety issues. The Dow fell today 114. The S&P 500 lost 11. The Nasdaq finished behind 26. A severe drought in California has farmers fighting for their survival and fighting against a government rule aimed at protecting fish. Of course, by a little call, explains. Thousands took to the street in a rally outside a congressional field hearing in Fresno. Tanksville politics are making a dire situation. Well, even worse. It is true that we're in a drought condition, but it's also true.